ladies and welcome to a new segment. Tonight, Max, very first in this, I call this Cannonball Friday. Tonight we look at a tin picture for the next, eh, I don't know, I don't know how many films I have. Every Friday I'll be reviewing one of them. Tonight, I am reviewing The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Uh, a little background story to this. It was supposed to be a comedy. Mm, I don't know if I see it as a comedy, truthfully. It's a good movie. It's, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot more blood in this one than there was in the first one, obviously. The first one only had, like, two or three scenes. This one's got... A lot more blood. Basically, uh, let's see. Uh, this one, they target, I, I guess one of the targets, the first one was the hippies that are sort of being targeted, the second one, kind of the yuppies. In the very beginning of it, there are these two jocks going to a high school or college party, and they're just obnoxious. And they decide to play chicken with a certain truck. Oh, this being on the radio. Fast forward a few hours. They call back the radio station to harass the DJ. Uh, Juanita Brock, also known as Stretch, played by Caroline Williams. And they happen to just about to cross a bridge when they are stopped by a truck. The same truck, and on that truck is the back of the truck, and out of the back of the truck pops a corpse of nicknamed Nubbins, who was supposed to be the um, hitchhiker in the first one, theoretically. And Nubbins is being controlled by another figure in like a giant hood. Kind of like a tarp blanket hood type of body suit type of looking thing. Anyway, one of the yuppies has a gun. He shoots Nubbins in the head. Nubbins' head moves off to one side. Doesn't come off or anything, but the, the costume you know, like pops off to one side. And you see your first close up of Leatherface. Yes, Leatherface is back. And I must say, it's, it's very lovely to see him. Anyway, needless to say, there's two preppy, yuppie <laughs> extras. Kind of buy it. They kind of buy a full of them. One of them, well, one of them gets a little off the top, you might say. The driver. Yeah. So, fast forward to uh, the next morning. Uh, you've got Dennis Hopper playing lefty and right. The brother to Franklin and Sally from the first one. He's basically there to avenge Franklin's death and and uh, Sally I guess Sally ended up in supposed to be like Catatonia but she ended up in a men I'm assuming a mental hospital but she just you know went nuts from the first one. I keep in mind this is supposed to be a comedy and not exactly a movie I would show someone that was you know a little depressed or anything like that. It's a good part. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know if that was so much a comedy as much more of a dark satire, maybe a little dark satire, but more an action film in some ways. So basically, now the family, the Sawyers, have moved on from the, the old farmhouse to an amusement park. And from there on is basically where the battle begins. And um, Stretch basically has the tape has the murder taped off the radio, and she plays it at Lefty's request. 
And then of course the Soyuz are going to target her and her assistant LG, who that was a bit brutal. Seeing uh, seeing this guy that liked her getting kind of viciously whacked by oh yeah I almost forgot uh, Chop Top yeah Chop Top played by the great Bill Mosley. Ah, now there's a role that Bill was just destined to play. Yes, you see, Bill Mosley, the guy who would go on to play Otis in House of a Thousand Corpses and the Devil's Rejects. I gotta say, for this one, he's pretty much the comic relief. Because if you see Bill Mosley, he's, he's pretty out there. Even when he tries to do normal roles, he always it always ends up kind of comical and dark. Yes, Bill Mosley. Bill, you would make a worthy Sith. Anyway, uh, to say the least, uh, of course, there's um, Cook, Jim Cito, one of his last roles. R.I.P., great actor. And, of course, Grandpa, um, who actually gets a little more uh, screen time, I think, than in the first one. Uh, so, basically, it's a, it's a very good... Uh, adrenaline rushed type of movie to watch. It's it's got elements of horror, but a lot of elements of some dark humor, which is good. But I wouldn't call it a comedy. Although the one fun fact being that uh, they did it as a uh, sort of a spoof against John Hughes films like The Breakfast Club. Uh, look at the posters, for example, and you'll see some very interesting similarities between The Breakfast Club. And Texas Chainsaw Number Two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. I mean, uh, so basically, that's about it for this one. Um, tune in next Friday for yet another canon film, and I'll probably be doing another film to review in between then and Friday. I'm assuming. So, anyway, that's all for this edition. Until next time.